Welcome to worship. It is good to worship with you. If you would like to be in touch or learn more about how to be engaged with Holy Trinity, I encourage you to click the link in the comments and share your email address with us. We give thanks for the ways in which you contribute to the mission and ministry of Holy Trinity. We are all blessed to be a blessing. In addition to monetary contributions, we love and serve our neighbors through a weekly food collection. At Holy Trinity, we have a box there available for you to contribute at any point in time during the week. And if you are not local, we encourage you to share your gifts with food pantries near you. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the prelude. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for the river of life flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and waken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every fear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let us pray. O God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Revelation. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before this throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails on his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I've talked about a friend of mine before. She has a lot of questions about the church and Christianity. And this week she asked me, so I know last week was Easter and churches were filled and you were really busy. I know about the talk about Jesus being raised, but what exactly are you celebrating? Are you celebrating something just from the past or does this affect your lives now? I've been thinking about this a lot throughout the week, and it came up in our council devotion as well. This question of, are our lives and is this world any different because of Easter, is a good question. And I would include in this question because of Jesus' life, his teaching miracles and healing, and the events of last week, when people, both political and religious, cried out for his execution because he was a threat, and then his death, and then his resurrection. Have your lives been changed because of any of this? What difference does the message of Jesus being raised from the dead make in your life? Make in all of our lives. How does it affect your day-to-day -day living? 
to be honest, on Easter Sunday, there's this high that occurs and I always hope it'll linger just a little bit longer. I want that experience to last because I do want my life to be changed and I want the world to be different because of this. But Monday seemed a lot like the Monday before and tomorrow will be the same. Before Easter, there was pain and suffering in the world and after Easter, that same pain and suffering exists. Before Easter, some of you had bills you didn't know how you would pay and after Easter, those bills still remain. Before Easter, many of us wondered about a future and what it would hold and after Easter, those questions still remain. Before Easter, life felt full and overwhelming and after Easter, your lives have even more that you're trying to juggle. And not much has changed for the disciples in our gospel either. Last week, they were told about the risen Christ and this week, they are hiding behind a locked door filled with fear. Jesus is alive. The brokenness of the world that killed him did not win. God has overcome all things, even the power of death. And where are the disciples? They've created for themselves their own prison of fear because the resurrection is not yet a reality for them. It's still a fantasy story, an idle tale, as they said last week. Not unlike people now, 2,000 years later. We know about locked doors, too. We know about the things that keep us from experiencing the fullness of life. We all have personal locks. Locks look like being, being hurt and anger and resentment, our pride and our self-image. And society has locked doors also, like racism and banning words like gay and transgender. All of this is because of fear. So when Jesus goes to see the disciples who are isolating themselves from the world, what does Jesus do? He shows up, wounds and all. One thing that struck me about this is that Jesus shows up with his wounds. His vulnerability is hanging all out there. The gaping hole from the spear in his side, the one last week that blood and water gushed out of, and the holes in his hands, not small holes from finishing nails or the, the ones we hang our pictures on, but large nails to hold a grown man vertically on a piece of wood. Think about it. Jesus seeks out his followers who are losing their minds, filled with fear, wondering if they too are going to be killed for following this one that was trying to change the world because of a perspective that was coming from the kingdom of God, making all things new and changing all of the unjust ways of society. And he shows up bearing his wounds and his peace. I don't know about you, but I tend to try and hide my wounds. Very few people know the depth of the places I've been hurt or wounds that I carry, and I suspect that's true for you. But not for Jesus. He shows up completely wounds and all. And it is through his wounds that they recognize and realize who he is and what has happened. It is his wounds that bring understanding. But Jesus doesn't leave it there. He sends them out one more time. Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And he breathed on them the Holy Spirit and said, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, when he comes back and hears what happened, protests and says, Unless I see for myself, it didn't happen. All this has caused me to wonder two things. Where are you hiding? What are your locked doors that you don't want anyone to enter? What are the places of fear and a lack of understanding have you isolated and alone? And the other, where have you experienced the risen Jesus? I can't promise you that Jesus is going to show up in the flesh right here or meet you in that way in your home. But I can promise you that God is indeed entering those places you have locked others out of because God has promised to do so. It might look like a friend spending an hour on the phone listening to you talk in a circle, but you need to be able to sort your head out and it's a vulnerable place to let someone enter, but you need someone in that space with you. Or it might look like showing your wounds to someone else and having them remind you that you are indeed lovable and worthy of love or forgiveness. It might look like acknowledging our lack of faith, being honest about our questions and having someone just understand and hear you. I don't know what your doors look like or what it will take for you to recognize God's presence in your life, but Jesus invites you today to hear the stories of his past, to hear the stories from others who have seen and believed, to unlock the doors. Jesus says to you today, peace be with you. No matter your circumstances, 
I am here with you and for you. Peace be with you. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One who acts righteously, equip your church as witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that they may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection life in the natural world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Direct those who are given human authority to lead with humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention towards serving those who are most in need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold your children who cry out to you. Wherever people are overcome by the fear of death, breathe into them your life and peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire those who lead your people in worship and praise. With joyful motion and sound, send us forth with praise that we cannot keep to ourselves. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us the words of your saints who, like Thomas, boldly confessed your Son as Lord and God. With Jesus, our leader, empower us to live according to his ways. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. May the hope of the resurrection be yours today and always.